Good morning, Dr. Brad. Why, Kirk Doolittle, let's meet again. I told Dragon I had to get a glass because uh, it's a little gauche for me to drink out of the freaking, even if it's just water out of the bottle. You know what I mean? Wait, there will be someone. It's we'll have too to close something. to the paper bag, uh, the paper bag. And <laughs> anyway, I know someone will say something about some chem microchemical pollution that you should be avoiding for your health, too. And that's OK. Everybody has all the. I enough. usually avoid I avoid all those conversations because usually from well-meaning people. But the guys are talking about you know you know take better care of your liver or probably because there's something to that because I had so much damage to mine. Got, <laughs> Not from alcohol, got, yeah, or yeah, drugs. Yeah. What? Uh, the the medical establishment's been running through a ringer. Yeah. So so anyway, we were just talking. Life is good. I I was um. I, I have to rethink my own personal duty cycle because I'm no good in the afternoon. It's too close to my bedtime. Like after late afternoon, I just am fading out. So I have to send a public apology to Francis Z because I missed a link yesterday. My apologies is very public. I will meet. I missed the I think, link. I think we most of us know that you start the day at something like 4 a.m. or something, don't you? Four. four. It's yeah. Two, I mean, what 240 right so you you know i think most of us realize I'm, that I'm no good i'd like i like okay and i cooked the bacon too hot and burned it up a little bit yesterday too. i think you're cute late at night myself because oh. you're kind of wasted and, and tired and mushy it's kind of cute really all now, right you're not gonna let me get away with it you know oh, now we're done now we're done I, See, I, I I like you that way. Um, uh, Life is good though. We're I feel a lot safer about that. Oh, no, that's fair. <laughs> I feel like I I might win once in a while. That's anyway, fair. so uh, uh, we were talking a moment ago. Yes. That uh, you know, we were talking about the comments basically because uh, oh. Brad, Brad got a couple of kind comments from people. It does happen. Um, <laughs> right. And and uh, quite often actually. And so uh, we were saying that, uh, yeah, it's true that I don't really understand the shift that's happening, but it's definitely happening. And um, so, of course, everybody's sort of noticing this momentum build, I guess, against the left. Which is comforting in some degree, although it doesn't, uh, you know, the, whether it can affect our institutional capture is something else. But we've noticed the same thing in how people talk to us and about us and that I'm not really sure why all of a sudden we're way more understood and understandable than we were in the past. It's like a, Sorry? It's like a function of heat soak, perhaps, which is it just takes time. Or it's just less divergent, right? I mean, it's, the world is converging so that the stimuli are self, because that, and that's generally what happens with most things. Is that it's, as convergence happen, it's easier to tell what's, you know, what's making sense making is a little easier. That's it. But, um, so you, how do you? What have you noticed exactly? Well, um, I notice, I notice what academics are saying. Mm -hmm. I notice, excuse me, I'm going to do it the right order. I notice what papers are saying. I know what academics are saying. That's what politicians are saying. I notice what the media is saying. And I notice the, the, what the, people are saying and what i do is i see the pattern between those mm. things uh, media has a lot la not media um, entertainment has a pretty broad long lag mm -hmm. i mean if you're getting down to the point where you know jewish liberal comedians are sort of saying there's something wrong here uh, it's made it it's you know made it through the charcoal of uh, of the population enough that is beginning to take some sort of notice that this is getting out of hand, and um, and you know the open dis the open discussion of 
uh, civil war was the thing that I was surprised about. And then mm. you look at Trump's speech yesterday, which was pretty much this is the you know this is the Alamo, um, uh, and you you see this has worked its way through the people to the point where there's the, the general awareness that um, the way I used to think about it is you believe you can win to you don't know if you can win. And that this is in this on both sides, right? Uh, in other words, uh, people have to come to the conclusion that you can't convince the other side. Huh. Right. And, uh, and before they will give up on belief on just rallying a flag and going after it. And they'll actually start looking for solutions, good and bad. And so, uh, you know, uh, you know, theoretically, this is, you know, 2025 on the long wave analysis, this is 2025. And so on the given, if we take the, I've said this before, if we take COVID as an accelerator, it's maybe it is going to be 2025. I don't know. It doesn't look like it's very far off where we have to have this. I mean, you certainly don't have a leadership in the presidency that's going to be able to do anything. And I can't imagine that the presidency election will be a, as much a collision point as Trump and what's her name? Clinton was. So, and who? Clinton, Trump and Clinton collision point in that election of 2016. Mm. That's sort of when it was like, wait, what? You know, what you know, what's happening here? Right. Now we could feel it back in 14, 12, 14 pretty clearly, but it manifested in and you could say that yeah, the internet had quite a bit to do with um destroying the gated narrative and and restoring populism. But you could also say that this only eliminated the potential for narratives, global uh, gated narratives, top-down narratives, and made it very difficult to, to counter populisms of opposing sorts. I, I'm not, you know, I'm I keep watching for a study that will be useless and useful in this on this subject. And there's nothing, you know, it's all crap. There's a lot of craps science huh. <laughs> um, there really is and so there's i keep expecting something to be useful and tell you know like can, what i'm really saying is can somebody do the work so because i don't want to right i mean it's it's a hard problem it's going to take a bunch of people a lot of math a whole bunch of surveys they got to be cross indexed right across multiple factor i mean can somebody try to figure out what the fuck's going on here um, and, uh, you know, in, in the end, it comes down to the madness of crowds, in other words, voting and voting is probably the only indicator of anything meaningful. It yeah, is, so we're, we're still the problem of the uniparty problem, which I mean, is not something I would have gotten on in the past. But unless we can, unless we can fix that issue, which is the aggressive leftism by the left and the and the non the, the failure to resist them by the right, I don't think we get anywhere. And the determining factor appears to be the, the laboring class, which looks like it's going to fall Republican simply because they're of borders and uh, board, borders and manufacturing uh, and marriage uh, and relationships are going to are those three problems are affecting the people in the lower half more than any belief in injustice is. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, it's like the the belief that you can gain justice through central authoritarian power compared to the um, damage that I'm feeling every day when I go out on the street to do my life. That's the question, because it's like I have to live my life and it's like the I don't I can take responsibility or I can uh, seek to have blame assigned. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like that second is not as uh, well thought of as the, as seeking uh, relief for immediate problems. Right. And then, 
there is something I've not, so if I can double down on the science problem, you know, you could you can you can trust Rasmussen to come out with the polls that are not left biased. <clears throat> right. They think it's right biased, but I said, well, they're just not left biased. <laughs> <laughs> like right. most polls, right? But um, and you can almost always trust Pew for neutrality. In other words, they're trying to get at okay, what what's how are people thinking? Like if you go out and say, I want to know how people are thinking about this, that that's already starts a problem. If you start with how are people thinking? Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you work out from there. You can you will you'll find things to go say, well, OK, how are the people thinking about these things? You know, I love Pew just for their research on religion, which is for me, fat, you know, it's one of my favorite uh, topics. Um, but, you know. Uh, there are. You still it's very hard to interview people today to survey people today. And get a demonstrated preference rather than reported preference. And so the yes. the general problem is you have to get, you have to find some way of collecting reported so that you know how they frame it. The people frame it yes. and demonstrated so you know how much they're bullshitting. Right. Which is why economic data tends to be the, you know, we, we're always looking for economic data because we're always looking for demonstrated behavior yes but even in economic data the organ is the way we collect the data today which is not granular enough this is the primary problem it frames the question so that you can't you know the data frames what you can ask and then there are taboos like you and know, i would say well if the government actually kept track of how much each of us cost and benefited to turn out that hi Almost all of us are dead weight. Very small number of us actually pull, uh, weight. Yeah. pull, pull the weight. Um, and they don't want that in democracy because, uh, and I'm like, well, you don't want that in democracy, except that that's, that actually turns out to be a good way of taxing people. Right? I mean, if you're, you're, you're satisfying the needs for a whole lot of people, right? I mean, then, then the, uh, you, we, we, could, we could put make pedestals of you and fucking, you know, we could have this the the people of the decade who uh, made the made the world a better place not by making people lie and feel good but by actually contributing to the uh the common good with through demonstrated matter matters they don't want that to happen because that way the politicians are disempowered and <laughs> the people who make a difference are are not empowered and it's bad enough uh um uh, Rudyard Lynch has a is extreme wow, extremely critical of the uh, institutions. More, I mean, I think I'm I'm a I considered them pretty much the root of evil and uh, a seditious, treasonous terrorist or social terrorist organization. <laughs> right? I mean, that's how I view it. <laughs> and no, uh, that's far too generous, is it? And, and, and from his perspective, that's generous. <laughs> yeah, because he's he's very Christian, you know. He's a he's a he's a very Christian young man, and uh, and so he has that very Christian morality in him and everything he says. So uh, that's why he sort of always says things positively, right? He's very he's very he's very good. He's a good person, but I mean, when it comes to the academy, he's like. No, this is like oh, we have like the, 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 the Church of Satan practically. I mean, I mean, he doesn't. He says it very. He he says it very scientifically, but I mean, it's basically the it might as well be the Church of Satan. It's it's pretty bad. I mean, it's pretty horrible, and you know, I I want him to do a piece on that because I think that's the. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, of, of his insights, which there are twenty or thirty odd, if I can remember kind of. And overlap with ours are huge, right? I mean, the only difference is really churchy, churchianity, you know, the churchianity sector. Um, 
I'm more Greek and he's more Catholic Christian, right? So uh, other than that, uh, he, the overlap is huge. And so you get down to there and, he, and this is, but the, on this thing, he's like, you know, he's like, no, they're, they're fucking, they're, you know, they are the most selfish, evil, seditious. I mean, it's, it's an institute, the, 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 it's the church of Satan for all, for all cases. Which I didn't view it that way, but I didn't go to one of those schools where that was the case, right? I mean, uh, I went to a small liberal arts, New England liberal arts college, and I studied, you know, engineering, law, and art, right? I mean, that I think that it's a, it's a timing issue as well. Because I, I went to a, a formerly Christian college that was a liberal arts college. And, um, and, and it, I, I, my opinion of it changed drastically in the last 20 years when I went to a reunion where the, um, it's just, just it's, it's, they substituted their own religion for their, their pseudo religion for what was a religious college. Mm -hmm. And, and it is, I, there was a proselytizer on campus and he was cr crying about climate change. And I'm like, I, oh, yeah, I'm not interested in your religion at all. And that's, the, but, but it wasn't obvious when I was going there that this was occurring. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was in the early eighties. I got out in 85 and it was like, I think that it was to, the, 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 the transformation had yet to become complete by that time. And at, you know, this time they're, they're anti-free speech. The deans, the deans of uh, law schools are anti-free speech, according to, to a recent report coming out of Stanford, and it's like good madness. Well, I mean, this is what religions do. They bring in intolerance for truth, whereas sciences bring in intolerance for falsehood. So, I mean, it's this constant war between them. Well, I mean, but the difference is, is that science is trying to empower ability, and religion is trying to disempower ability by empowering the less able and once you realize that's what they're doing because it's really um a non it's really an ex, ex non-aggression as an extremist position right which to the point of non-competition mm. and where um uh science and is um a is by definition a competition or it's not science it's philosophy and uh, you can have uh, the state be the administer of order by increasing order through competition which is meritocracy and natural rights and natural law or the state can decrease um order by uh creating um by fostering the attack on meritocracy cooperation etc that's really simple see they're either evolving which is stressful and meritocratic and produces hierarchies or you're not <laughs> i mean it's not complicated and we see through history this is the case i'm just saying this again and listen to myself and i'm saying well i use tri trifunctionalism to explain everything because everything's trifunctional but, uh, you know, I was saying yesterday that, just as a quick aside, that I don't think we're aware as a group how much more sophisticated we are than the rest of the planet at this point. And because Wait, the people in our movement, I, I don't think we understand. Yes. I don't think we understand that we're walking around with, you know, basically modern phys physics in an age of superstition, right? We have that big, because... You know, I was saying to somebody, look, look, it's not that we understand a pattern. We understand the pattern and the application of the pattern at all scales. So, you know, once you have a system of measurement that's universally commensurable, the world turned out to be a pretty fucking simple place. And everybody's trying to fuck, fuck with it. And so from our standpoint, you know, the world has gotten got pretty goddamn simple. Well, but for the rest of the world, it hasn't gotten simple. And so when they hear one thing out of our mouths, right, on one particular topic, they have no fucking idea that we're that right. we're scientists in the age of superstition, right? It is the um, because it sounds so much like English. 
Right, because it's it's complicated, but it's not as inaccessible as symbolic mathematics, right? Or, right, right. Or, or it's not as external to our sense perception as uh, as uh, astronomy. Uh, um, excuse me, as uh, cosmology or the or the subatomic, right, or the molecular. It's not outside of. It's still within our range. Right, and it's still in a our perce sense perception. It's still within our vocabulary of our sense perception, right? But it's um, as it's as counter to our sense perception as those things that were beyond our self right. so perception, it, both it, large and small. It allows us to make sense where otherwise it's not possible. Right. And so it's, it causes me to think about the Roman roads. Yes. Archimedes made the odometer for the Roman Empire. Yes. They could mark the roads every mile. And it's like the barbarians have no clue what they're dealing with when they yes. see <laughs> the mile marker, right? And it's Roman, it seems like so small a thing, but it's not. <laughs> it's like the Roman the Roman general knows exactly when he's going to arrive at the next city where he's going to meet his friends and crush the Ro the barbarians as necessary. And it's the the distance the distance between the barbarian mindset and the Roman mindset just because of that technology, which is like hard for us to even think of as technology, is huge. And yes, I think yeah. that's where we are in that. But I noticed this thing, and I'm going to send you the link to it. Uh, oh my, getting some very unusual flashy things. I sent you a link to uh, Russell Brandt's video, which in which he's talking about the. Uh, the confluence that's occurring, which is he's saying the people that he formerly considered to be right wing are conciliatory towards anti-authoritarian devolution of authority to more local environments, which is along the same lines as the evolution of thinking that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. And it's just uh, more evidence pointing in the same direction. Reasonable minds agree to agree even if we disagree. Yes, yes. You get to govern your life the way you seem fit, as long as you allow me to do the same thing mm -hmm. and we have an alliance. Yep. I tell us that's we don't need more than that, really. You know, you know, we just need to agree to let each other be, you know. I mean as long as you're it's like reciprocity is really simple. Don't impose a cause. Undemonstrated interest. The problem is you got a demonstrated interest, right, which means that's right. Actually, you have to actually demonstrate your interest. So, and you can't do that. You can't say, "Well, well." well I, so I sent you that so you can put it at, in the uh, show notes. Okay, I'll do that. I see that. So I took us off line, be uh, off track because I, I felt that was a good opportunity to make that point because I'm trying to make that with the staff. Recently, because I don't, I I think that we've been, you know, it's that feeling. I said I started when I first started working with you. I said I can't remember what it's like to be normal enough, and you know, <laughs> I can't remember what it's like to not know what I know. Mm -hmm. And even before I knew what I knew, I had an intuition that I didn't that something was wrong. I go back to fucking seventh grade and saying there's something wrong with math. <laughs> this is not right. This is this is <laughs> Or you know, I remember where they the, the, it was induction is in induction versus deduction. I'm like, mm, there's something really wrong here because this isn't right. And you know, you just have these instincts, right? That but you know, you know, if you don't have those instincts, you're not weird. In other words, in other words, I'm weird, right? So if you're not weird and autistic, then you don't have those instincts. Okay, well, and then you do, you don't uh, because those instincts develop a certain body of knowledge, and because of that body of knowledge, you don't sort of get to where we are. I mean. The world seems way more kaleidic, you know, un, 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 uh, chaotic. It's actually really simple in the end. That's right. It's just very hard to make a lot of, it takes a lot of people to do anything meaningful. And so it's a, it's just harder to get a lot of people to, to not do what the animal wants in favor of delaying gratification to do what the human needs. It's just very hard to get a lot of people to do that. 
I think that there's a uh, um, there's a certain um, sense that's developed that that people will recognize the sense of calmness in people that understand what's going on you know in what appears to be a entirely chaotic situation mm -hmm. so they're naturally attracted to that and then picking up vibes coming from that calm space and it just takes brilliant. a minute brilliant 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 yes because I, I talk to my patients about it and it's like this i know how this contest ends it's okay you have to have faith and let's just have faith in the ultimate outcome of the contest and then that calms them down. And they appreciate that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's a, it is, it is the, the truth will win. I don't know about that. Given, given, given a limited enough difference, the truth will win. How does the, how do we talk about the, Greeks and the Persians being less different than the Greeks, the Persians, and the Arabs. But the Greeks and the Persians wearing themselves down to the point where the Arabs win by the combination of force and taxation. Most people converted to Islam to, to, to escape the taxes. Not because they thought the religion was good. And most people cut most people and the people who didn't vote to taxes, that's the bottom. The people who didn't vote to taxes devoted ideologically because it was became the ideology of the upper of the conquering ruling class. So it's the same thing that happened with Christianity, right? I mean, the people at the bottom do it for status, right? Status and belonging in the era of chaos, and emerges out of that the capacity to have power over those people. That becomes a administrative power structure, and the power structure eventually takes over the empire. Well, the same thing happen is happening today: is that we have a religion of the underclasses and women, right? You have those two. It's formed, taken over the academy and the state, and now it's threatening to take over the 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 civilization's culture, and this through destruction of the uh, mass, what we call the masculine. Which is what they what religion does destroys the masculine, and it which is the the demand for adaptation to the laws of nature by the accumulation of responsibility. So I mean the uh, the idea that um, uh, that this is this is some weird eccentric happening is nonsense. It's just a natural counter reaction whenever you raise a body of people who may not be able to may be able not be able to perform with or adopt the responsibility necessary for the degree of technology, civilization, cooperation, trust, and administration that's necessary to maintain itself. So, I mean, I keep seeing it all the time. I keep seeing it all the time is that, I mean, well, there's a reason isolation and speciation events worked. And there, in other words, America is an isolation and speciation event. But the minute you have introgression, you know, which is uh, which we've had um, through rapid integration, you can no longer maintain the uh, advantage that was allowed by isolation speciation event. So and this happens at the political level. It happens at the social level. It happens at the commercial level. I mean, look at how many corporations go bad just because the hire. They become so prosperous that they can afford to hire people who seek virtue signaling positions instead of meritocratic ones. I mean, that, 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 that's legendary. How many families don't last three generations because of accumulated rent seeking? So, I mean, the, the, the same thing happens with with uh, with uh, societies, with polities, uh, polities, empires, is that and it requires an isolation and speciation event. To, but the problem is, is that masses then consume the speciation. We talk about it like it's a market phenomenon, but you could also talk about it like cancer. And so we're, we've, we had our isolation and speciation event, and we got the opportunity to basically wipe out a continent, a couple of continents, and repopulate them with a new, new speciation event. Um, the problem is, is that we're allowing the spread, just like we did in the past, you know, by raising people up in agency, you've just now done the same thing as reversing isolation and speciation. 
Does that make sense? Yes. And so you've you, we've created this problem of uh, you created the problem of uh, the more people you add, there's a there's a there's a distribution of people that need to be in charge and government, and it needs to be enough, but not too many. <laughs> in other words, there needs to be enough people who can influence the direction of the future to maintain isolation and speciation event. Or what you have is you have a, a uh, hybridization event. And in some places like the Middle East or Africa, you have a, um, a hybridization and decline event. So it just it turns out that that explains why IQ increases as we disappear. As we left Africa, it, goes, it keeps going up and up and up, but until you run out of isolation and speciation events. And it turns out that humans ran out of isolation and speciation events in about 40,000 years. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Exhaustion of opportunity. Exhausted the opportunity. I'm not sure we can do much more with the current body form we have, but there seems to be some need higher oxygen levels or something to make that work. <laughs> anyway, sorry, did I get too deep there? I got too deep. That was good. I got sleep last night, so I might be dangerous today. Oh my. Yeah, so the, the issue is this is that, that we have uh we we got some incompetence in charge. They they the incompetence are are managing our government that that are um elevated by um Poor choices by the polity, at the very least. Oh, because you, you've got too many people. I mean, if all you have that determined who's constructing policy, you know, well, let's put it the other way. The whole point is if you have natural law, right, you have a rule of law by the natural law and the common law, right? Everybody's protected, right? That, 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 that's what you need. Democracy doesn't mean shit, right? Other than who establishes policy. Policy. Well, the problem with policy is it is the is the policy um, increasing capital capital discovery and accumulation or not. And so the problem the question is who's able to make a decision on what's good policy. Well, too small of people it becomes rent seeking, and too large people it becomes rent seeking. So the golden mean in the middle there is when you have sort of some majority middle class, basically majority of the people who produce capital. Yes. And the and the and and not people. Else. So that's just the that, that's the ancient way we used to measure that is property. If you can't accumulate property, you haven't demonstrated competency. Seems very reasonable. And if you haven't demonstrated competency, you don't have political commonality. What I've been trying to make the point over the past few days is if you don't can't demonstrate a marriage, you don't have social commonality. Right. Right. You might be human. But you're just a fucking resource, right? I mean, you're, which can be put to good or ill. Once you have a family, now all of a sudden you've got to build an organization. You're delaying gratif personal gratification for the pur purpose of intergenerational production. And once you have put, you've got a business or an industry, now you're extending that beyond yourself. And once you've got a net, in, you've got a network of industries, you're doing a beyond beyond what's probably even comprehensible to you. And what's the purpose of the polity? It's to make sure that works. I mean, it's, it's nothing else. I mean, the, 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 the only commercial value in the, in the government is, you know, well, it's nice if we create, com we create commons, which is infrastructure and stuff like that. It's helpful if we create some insurance, but not if we, can t we develop rent-seeking. And probably least understood, but most important is it's um the government is the only organization large enough to to fund core research and development. Mm -hmm. And since basically everything's downstream from core research and development, the private sector can only finance things within its financial return horizon. But what's the financial return horizon of the government? Hundreds right. of years. I mean, it doesn't. I mean. 
people build monuments at the time and they think they're stupid but or whatever, but they're not. Turns out that building the pyramids is a really good investment. <laughs> it sounds silly, but it's not. You know, the Taj Mahal sounds like silly. It's not. Building the the White House, the Washington Monument, the Congress or a cathedral, you know, or your, your glorious town hall or your local churches, these monuments turn out to be evidence that I should be here. Right? They're also evidence I was here, but they're evidence I should be here. And there's something I got to live up to. Yeah, create that that need. So, um, so the the problem is we we have put we have tr the instinct of everybody is to operate to think the world should operate at their level of sense perception, mm -hmm. their radius of cognition. But I mean, what's what's the what that, that's that that can't be that ends up with women thinking the society should operate like. The, the women's knitting circle or the collection of moms instead of uh, a commons, right? And then that, and you work that all the way up to the government should be an extension of the family. It was the opposite. Right? And so um, uh, to, to produce a government full, so it's like, it's not, it's not so important to include so many people. It turns out it's really bad to include too many people in any organization. It turns out it's bad. Right. I mean, it, it, you want to include people with what we call skin in the game, which I, I kind of don't like. It. I mean, that's great because it's a selfish sort of viewpoint. I don't like it. It's a, I'm just worried about competency. Well, I mean, if you demonstrate competency, you might have skin in the game. Right. But uh, it's hard to it's hard to if you the only question is what skin is produced by competency is skin in the game produced by financialism by academic sedition, by the production of false promises, by wealth from gambling or drugs. I mean, there's, that's not a demonstrative competency. That's a demonstration of your development of wealth, despite only because the incompetency of the government to prevent uh, rent seeking and baiting into hazard, all of which are harms. So the question is, what's your competency? Your competency is the organization of people in and the, the production of inter intergenerational capital. Sorry, I was, I was wondering. If I right, it's, a, it's an interesting function because it's like, um, what well, you you just made a proof of the um, the fact that good liars taking advantage of opportunities uh, due to uh, failure of diligence of the government is not competency. Correct. And it's like, okay. Criminality. It's criminality doesn't, doesn't it, mean competence. It suggests skin in the game where the skin should be eliminated from Yes, the exactly. Game. From the game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. That's the problem of the age, right? The, of the moment. Yeah. And, and so who's right to be, everybody's right to be pissed off. The problem is, they got us pissed off at the right and left when the when in other words when the 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 right is pretty much right the left is right in the bottom two thirds they're screwed but they're screwed because of all the people lying false giving them false promise um right and the right's right because they're like you're not protecting us from this stuff right and you're and, and then you know so you have this the the problem is the we, they've got position. This is left versus right when it's when it's producers and consumers against extractors <laughs> and extractors who are 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 either doing it through the through the financial arena or various financial schemes, the government through basically it's another finance. What the government does is largely an extension of the financialism financial scheme. Yeah. And through the um, uh, and through the false promise of the academy, that's feeding the financial media and state system, in order to to pretend that they're competent. Now, I get, I'm happy to argue with any group of professors you want to put together, 
I'll win. And they'll shout me down or call me immoral or something, but it would win because they're not that competent. In fact, the number of competent people is terrifying. Now, one of the things I've come sort of trying to figure out is if there seems to be an undue amount of competence coming out of engineering and computer science. And my belief is that engineering has always produced an extraordinary, it always has produced competency because it's the least tolerant because it's a p- applied science, right? I mean, that's right. It's least fool around it, space. It, yeah, so Military is good. Engineering is good, right? Um, what's happening with computer science is the more we try to make machines smart, the more we learn about how people think. <laughs> And so there's a lot coming out of, um, I don't mean, I mean computer science. I don't mean, it's like thinking, you know, electromagnetism comes out of the the electrician that, you know, wires your, your house outlet. No, I mean, there's, so, I mean, but when I said that, but when you get into computer science, I mean, it's that those of us who work in an area, the area where we're actually trying to solve the hard problem of decidability. And then this whole fucking alignment bullshit that's crept in, which is left. What's that in. alignment? Uh, it's where you get Chat GPT, and the um, their original mission is to uh, do no, you know, AI that does no harm. Except the only AI that does no harm is the AI AI that tells no lie, and they've made AIs that lie, right? So you've still got that. But there are at least those of us who said there are some of us who are aware. The purpose of AI is to tell no lie, right? Right. So an interesting confluence of um, computer science, computation, and um, cognitive science. Correct. So there's this. So there's this group of people now who are who who are maintaining traditional minds, right? But even among them, there's this leftist introgression of alignment. Well, alignment. You know, here's the difference. If I if I ask a computer how to make nuclear glycerin in my bathtub, right? First of all, it's way harder than people think. <laughs> or um, what's the stuff they use in the terrorists use? Uh, oh my, plastic explosive. Yes, semtex. Um. That stuff is, I mean, you basically make it with coffee machines. I mean, it's just, right. However, first of all, it's a lot of work to do both of those things. <clears throat> and, and and you got and, and you got to organ, you got to get the chemistry and whatever. Do I really care if people know how to make that stuff? No, because almost nobody's going to make it. Nobody can make it. And, you know, if I want to make it, the, having it, it's, all, it's already invisible. I can find it, right? It's not. If I'm that dedicated, I'm going to find it. So who cares? Now, there are certain things, you know, if you say, can you, um, uh, so so there's very little that a machine can know that's really dangerous. Like how to how to rob a bank, right? I mean, I did this, I, I, I did this back in the 90s. I said, can you find out online, because when the internet came out, how to rob a bank? Absolutely. <laughs> the problem is, is that it's increasing, it's pretty difficult to rob a bank and get away with it. This this is just making me. Uh, I have to tell a story because it's funny. I have a, I had a rogues wall in my office before I sold the place, and uh, among the people on the rogues wall was Willie Sutton. And this this is a Willie Sutton was a bank robber in the thirties. This is for the oh yes 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 yes. Some newspaper man had the temerity to ask Willie, Willie, why do you rob banks? And he said, That's where they keep the money. And now that's old school. That's how old school was back in the thirties. They actually had real money in the banks and now they don't. I've been in the vaults. It's yes. just like they have some bags of nickels. I'm like, this place is empty. <laughs> they don't keep money in the banks. They use the banks as a, as a tool for the robbers that are doing the robbing. in the Right, bank. right, right, it's right. It's like, oh my, this has gone all perverse in the last hundred years. Yeah, and then and the, here's the real answer: it's you. You can't really rob a bank. You can only rob armored cars. The problem is they're in motion all the time, right? And and they can get away, and they're 
and it's in pub they're in public places right i mean so it's like so i mean even then what is i mean what are you going to get an armored car haul unless it's a lucky unless you have inside information it's just and so the, because why is because most of the money's digital what isn't digital is kept at the scent you know it's under basically military protection or get inside and which so i mean my the point here is that what is what and even if even if they were going to tell you how to how to all this anything like anything criminal it uh it uh, i don't if you suppress that i would be well well that's just not something polite people talk about right that's different from a truth like this is going to be offensive that's what well, we call fair trigger warning Right. And so when you say, well, this is, that that's basically violating truth before face. There's a difference between truth before harm. I mean, harm, in other words, there's difference between truth before face, regardless of cost, and um and uh and uh what how do I say this? And uh, truth before harm, which is theft, right? Which is theft. So do you have the right to be ignorant, wrong, or ignorant? That's what truth before face means. Do you have the right to ignorance? Well, that's a that's a that's a great question. Do you have the right to to commit crimes of, of de against demonstrated interest? Well, that's the difference between imaginary and real. And be right. And so, and and second is so. What, when you say, I don't want to have my self-image violated, mm. what you're saying is, I want to have unearned capital. I want a fraud. Whereas, if, so if I'm like, you know, does that make sense? They seek, if you wish to seek to maintain the facade so you may enjoy the benefits of the lie, that that's that's a harm on demonstrated interest correct that's it's a it's criminal so do you have the right to believe stupid things well as long as they don't nothing none of them come out of your mouth right i mean i suppose that's all right but the begin the ability to art to to um insult to ask a question of an of an information provider and get a lie that protects mm. your self-image is is conspiracy to commit a crime Right, that's the, the, you're engaged. Right. These these guys who are pre, who are doing alignment, right? I've not heard this term in in. in well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm using it because it's the term that um, the the um, the industry uses, and it's specifically the term that the um, people of OpenAI use, and their president in particular, the CEO in particular. Um, the CEO uses uh, to talk about it, and so it's a, it, it so it signifies a, a collusion of non truths. Yes, of falsehoods. Oh my! Because I mean, if I go down to it, what's the thing that separates the West from the rest? It's truth before face. Now you okay. could say, well, it's sovereignty. Of demonstrated interests. Well, I mean, I, 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 that that that's true, but that is a lot more consistent across civilizations. But truth before face, regardless of cost, that's a that's that's unique. We're the only people that do that, even close. And it turns out that. It, that habit, whether in military reporting or jury testimony or uh, public speech or church confession, which is the whole fucking spectrum, right? I mean, con or uh, uh, off, I, I cut public speech, uh, truth in contract. That was basically when I sell you something. Uh, promise and oath and confession we have all these institutions that say it's truth before face there's no yes. exception to it I mean, the only exception we ever had that that's really out there is um, husbands and wives can't testify against each other because that's a, a violation of a 
family. It's sacred, and it's also a malincentive because we do stuff. The, in our personal relationships, or especially our marital relationships, or sometimes in family relationships, we say things we don't mean. Right? We say things we don't mean because they're just emoting. So if you can testify against your husband or wife, that that destroys the in first institution of marriage. But even that wasn't really, that's only within limits. Right. right. That's only within limits. I mean, you can't be forced to testify against your spouse. Mm, that's right. That's different from. Uh, you may not. You, you may. You may. Right, you may not. Must not. It's you must not. That's you not can. Necessary. You can, but you, 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 you can't be forced to if you don't that's want right. to. Um, so this truth before face thing is really important. And so what they're doing with the AIs by alignment or leftism, which is basically um, a violation of truth before face. That's what it's all about, right? The, the entire purpose of the uh, leftist movement is anti-Darwinian. And the, per the way they deal with the anti-Darwinian movement is they prevent, uh, they prohibit truth before face. And prevent the formation of hierarchies because hierarchies would allow judgments and judgments would allow would force natural sortition and natural sortition is a hierarchy. It's, so you say anti-Darwinian. I I I I think it's more general. This and you said it before, which is it's anti-good God. It's anti-God because God created the implicate order of the universe, and it's like it's denial of the order of the universe in the general sense. Well, I, I, I know, I know that, but um, uh, when I say that, I, when you reduce it to that, you've taken Darwin out of it, Darwinian evolution out of it. So you use the problem: mm. what's the our order of the universe? The order mm. of the universe, which is evolutionary computation, is continuous yes. of evolution by evolutionary computation. Now, the fact that God made that rule, I mean, that's you know whether He did or not, the rule exists. So okay. yeah, so for a religious person, that probably matters because I have some belief that I'm going to go to hell if I violate the God, whatever. But in, in in the engineering terms, if you violate the laws of the universe, you're going to pay for it somehow. The pay, the pay will come out. It may come out right now. It may come out later. It may come out two years from now. It may come a generation from now or three generations from now, which is what the whole point of the left is. If they can cause you to deny it, they can get it to last enough generations that, you're, that the forgetting curve of institutions of truth before face will be overcome. And that's what they're trying to do. That's what it appears to be. So it's our job to put it. What 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 we're doing, what you and I and the team are doing, is we're putting it in a fucking rule. That, that all those all that science in a yeah. document that says uh, you can't you can't lie, cheat, and steal with people in order to uh, in order to uh, bring about the disorder that would lead to harm, even if you think it's good in the short term. People. People tease me about the law, and I'm like, you know, well, you know, you like, well, you know, they say, well, look what they do with the law, and I, well, you know, I'm going to say the opposite. Are we have the only constitution that's basic, basically legal, other than the rest of the Anglosphere, and after the Anglosphere, they're all a joke. Well, so why is why is our constitution not a joke? Well, it it's resisted more than every other constitution, including the Anglosphere, right? And one of the reasons existed is Christians, the Christian devotion to the Constitution was heretofore as radical as it was to their, to either Jesus or God, which is the difference between most religions. It's like, where's your emphasis? The spirit, the God, or like Anglicans, like people more like me. It's like, well, whatever works, you know, sorry, I'm picking on, picking on my own people. Um, whatever works. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I'm like, well, Dar so you could say, well, Kurt Darwinian doesn't explain. Well, I mean, Darwin is, when I say Darwinian is the rule of the, the first principle by which the, all, all existence in the universe is formed is the elimination of stress by the, by either concentration in, uh, in, of energy or its dissipation in space. And the right. uh, concentration of energy results in the hierarchy of masses through compu through evolutionary computation. Uh, which favors complexity and delays and entropy. And so that's what life and everything and everything we do is. So 
I don't know. I mean, if, if you violate the laws of the universe, you, you got to expect that you're going to pay for them. All right. I, it's not really that complicated. It must come at some cost. There's no magic. Is it a real... Physicists have this uh, stated as a series of principles and then the problem is people think we're separate from the universe and the more we know the <laughs> just a time difference it's like have we're life is like a battery right uh it it it, it, it uh, and cooperation is like um a reduction on reduction on transmission of energy mm -hmm. and increase right so um, and most of that comes down to defeat of time. So it's just very odd to me that you think you can get away with anything. Well, you can you can get you we can go back to subsistence living by hunter, hunting and gathering on the planet, right? Sure, if there's gonna be a million over two of us, right? I mean, right? is that gonna make any difference? We want to have farmers, we can get up to the many millions. You want to cooperate in large numbers, you need money and economics and accounting and all this other shit to be able to create from billions, which is pretty obvious. But, uh, you know, that requires mass product cooperation and productivity. Well, the problem is, is the minute you increase more plenty, you also create more, more plenty. You create more opportunity, excuse me, more plenty by more complexity, you create more opportunity for parasitism just as you did for more production. So we have to continue with it's like this never ending digit uh, discipline that we have to preserve, preserve and maintain to suppress the emergence of predation, parasitism, predation and destruction by those people who uh, want to take it easy and don't want to run on their treadmill. Well, if you say, I don't want to run on the treadmill and, but I'm not going to do anybody harm, then it's okay. If you say, I'm going to run on the treadmill and I'm going to try to undermine the treadmill, then uh, we need to get rid of you, right? And if you say, I'm not fit for the treadmill, then we say, well, then just don't make more of you. It's not. I mean, I'm kind of big into the artists who live poor and make their art. I mean, there's, I have a lot of friends like that, or had used to have a lot of friends like that, right? And uh, I, I kind of fond of those people, right? They're, they're usually people you want to hang out with. But they're not malicious. They're not blaming their condition, right? On the people. How they, they chose wish, it. They might wish there was socialized medicine, so they could do their thing at lower risk. And you know, I might say that that might be an even that might be a trade we could make happen. But the leftists are saying they know better, and that it needs to be a different world. They're not saying that they're going to find a place to 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 behave in this world. They think they're going to make the world better when actually they're just going to make it worse. They, they don't know that. They ag actively attempt to believe their own nonsense. Yes. They prefer to believe their own nonsense. Just make sure that I'm in charge because then I can do true socialism. Yeah, exactly. It's like the because that wasn't real parade socialism. Parade of idiots. I mean, I was like, even the, even the healthcare issue. Well, you know, American health is pretty awesome. The problem is the bankruptcy problem, and that's solvable. But no, they got to go to through full European health care, which they <clears throat> if you I guess if you're 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 in Europe, you think is okay, but and uh, but as someone who's had serious illnesses, they get taken care of in three days. I mean, I would have, I would, I wouldn't know what would happen to me if I'd had to wait a year and a half, right, for my cancer right. surgery. I was out in three days. It is. It's an interesting function, and it's like um, the 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 system that we have is is. Um, it seems like it's the wheels are falling off. Yes. And it's okay. It needs to be reorganized. And it's like, okay, that's what it will take. And it's like, well, but what concerns me is, is a great medicine, the academy are great examples. The, the military, the medicine and the academy military is no longer able to maintain its role as the primary source of research and development. 
the um, uh, academy is no longer in its position of providing people who are sufficient for the continued administration of the state. And the medicine is no longer in a position where individual actors can empirically understand their patients and act for the liberty, liberty of their benefit. We've taken the mat, it's turned these things into commodity processes. Yes. And, and they're not commodities. <laughs> they're excellences. <laughs> right. It's like, I wonder, like, they can't recruit people for the military right now because the military went woke. No, you don't get it. The kind of guy who goes in the military goes into it. He's not woke. He's, and if he is, he's not somebody you want in the military. <laughs> they can't recruit for it. That's like, duh. How hard is that to figure <laughs> out? Bring... Wait, but see, the beauty of it is they proved it. <laughs> it's like, it's like, no, no. It, that doesn't work. See, I mean, if you look at, if you look at the who, where the people come from, it's the Scots Irish who make a right. And uh, if you if you take away their macho bullshit, there's nobody left. So is that the purpose of the left? Yes, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so I mean, you look at the academy, and it's like. Is it a bunch of people who are trying to make your the the continue the 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 administration of the state, you know, truth before face, rule of law, natural law, etc.? They're not. I mean, I wrote this piece the other day. They want somebody that wants to interview interview me about it. Well, I just wrote this quick piece. And I said, look, I mean, uh, the problem, of course, is that the the the, the states the the our best universities which is Yale and Harvard and Stanford. And I'm just going to prick those three, but I can go through the next right. 15 pretty easily. I'm not so sure about Chicago, but um, these top institutions teach sedition. They teach how to undermine the constitution. Yes. And so uh, what they really teach is legal activism, which is legal sedition. Oh my and you know it's it's not hard just pull up their freaking course catalogs and go through their courses or list or enough, enough of their enough of their courseware is public that you can see you can listen into right so they're revolutionary in their function right but what jewish culture is revolutionary it's not evolutionary hmm and so, uh, by the way, I just wanted to mention that the the, the problem for the Jewish now is that they, they've been so successful at undermining whiteness that now the Jews are being replaced in the universities. So, uh, by whom? By people who are woke. Oh, so the the new religion supersedes their right. So I mean, it's like you can't secular Judaism. Stuff. It's like you can't. There's one way of doing it right, right, and after that, it's all downhill. And everyone's like, the one way of doing it right is great, but then you deprive people. What Once you have enough people to do that, there's no more room in the academy. right? But look how many people we have in the academy today. We we have it so that no prof profs can earn enough money. Yes. Right? Uh, so they're, 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 they're private. They're taking, they have a few profs. They pull all the money into administration. And yes. they put in fake professors, right? And what quality are these professors? Uh, you know, they so might sufficient. be okay. But I I talk, I listen to, I, I listen to them to complain about it. And I'm like, you're too stupid to be in the university anyway. I've got a PhD. That doesn't tell me anything. Yes, it's a, it's a. The, my father was, a, he he got his PhD with the last of the jobs of of history professors in 1970. They were, and and they've been overproducing since then. And what to what end? Yeah. And it is, and it, the uh, uh, my argument will be this: is that the the universities are pro producing for the continuation of the administrative state, although that that mission all has evolved toward the authoritarian imper imper imperial system yes. of the Middle East. Yes, which is to say, it's none of it. None of that answer is good. That's none of it satisfactory, and. It, all needs to be defunded in my estimation because that's the nicest way to clean it up. You know, my one of my favorite uh, disses on the university because I 
like I said, could you get, can, I've tried, can you get a PhD in what I do? Absolutely not. Because <laughs> what's funny about it is this, is, is what you do is more accurately um, within the spirit of the origin of the university system. Yes. Because it, you, it requires you to be able to explain everything. Yes. And it's like, and you must know everything in order to do it. And it's like, it appears that this is most accurately what the university was designed to provide. Yes. And it doesn't do it. And I can't, <laughs> you can't even get, you can't even, you can't even put a dissertation committee together. I mean, how am I going to do that across philosophy, cognitive science, economics, uh, mathematics, uh, cognitive science, economics, um, uh, um, what am I, I'm losing running, a uh, law. How, how, how am I going to do that? Well, you can't, right? And so, so here's my here's my here's my dig. Right? Here's my, here's my dig. Here it comes. It's like, it's like the the university has become a low trust society. Hmm. So what's the evidence of a low trust society? Compartmentalization, specialization. Hmm. Instead of, uh, uh, in other words, everyone's going their own direction. Why? Because the university became a vehicle for careerism, right? For the individual and money making for the individual. Instead mm. of a, 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 a wing of the religion or a ring of the state, which was the same thing, religion being a wing of the state, mm. the academy being a wing of religion, instead of an institution that's trying to that's trying to work for the common good, the university doesn't work for the common good anymore. It's the common ill, and for purely selfish reasons. So, and I'm like, you know, I was as well. It's like teacher, but I, my teacher and my teacher loves me and is good. Well, you know, your teacher might. You know, there's always there's good teacher, and there's most people have a good aspect to them. But you know, you're confusing your relation, personal relationship, with something you understand with the alternative of what it could be, if the person was actually competent and good in what they were doing as a teacher. Well, the same things with professors. You know, there's some professors that are actually quite good. You know, I'm <clears throat> I'm not wired to just take professor speech at face value. <laughs> Uh, so I don't do that, which is extraordinarily frustrating for any professor. But you know, you know, you, you read, so you you go through college, and you're like, you know, you got this about right, and yeah, you're sort of right on that. But if you read the great books, you're like, you're still in the same position. You read the great book, you read the topic, the best books by the best people of this of the past fifty yeah. years, yeah. right? Uh, every one of those people has something right. Yes. But vi almost none of them have more than one thing right. <clears throat> it takes all across all those domains. So I'm like, is this a high trust or is it a low trust academy? In other words, are they working together toward a common good? Are they working toward individual goods at the expense of the common good? Oh, well, the, the, the evidence by Lindsay and his company that were um, generating fake papers for the purpose of proving the fakeness of the disciplines demonstrates the uh, factual nature of the university system. Yeah. And so what's the, uh, as we have the answer, what's the way you fix that? You fix that all speech in public to the public and matters public is subject to, to te uh, re the, the constraints of testimony. And if that happened, public uh, papers, when a testimony is required to be, remember it's the whole truth and nothing, but, the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, full accounting, and nothing but the truth. In other words, no fictionalisms, right? No. Is that the number of papers published a year would go down to, you know, it would it would go back to the, the hundreds or thousands, right? And they would be useful. Right. And and not buried in a flurry of nonsense. Right. And worse, what happens, of course, is because the curve of value of papers and there's a very few valuable is because mostly because st it's student work it's not actual research work it's stuff stuff that has to be get, get done in order to maintain my job so you've basically turned student work into a, into into science when it's not right and so um then you take that and you make it worse you say okay well if I look at what the popular press promotes that's published as scientific paper, it's mm. the worst stuff of all. 
because it's the most emotionally agitating, attention seeking, and it's the least under it's the most understandable, which means it's the least novel and scientific. Right. And, I mean, so if, if you go into if you were like go into biology and chemistry, which are which are pretty scientific sciences, right? I mean, you know, they're they're, they're they publish a paper on some fucking weird molecule that does something, right? And you know, the the reason they're doing that it's it's in the process of trying to figure out how to solve Alzheimer's or some goddamn thing, or maybe they don't know. It's just a weird molecule that has doing something weird. weird. It's doing we're something weird, and we want to understand right? that. That stuff's pretty good. But you know, basically anything you say in psychology, sociology, political science, even most economics, it's all shit. Right, and even physics, it's a joke. I mean, uh, I mean, there, there, you see these things of that are that are pretty good it's like wow we found this this uh this star this star system that's pulsating this and it's producing this range and i don't fucking get why right i mean they just don't understand that's an interesting paper because it's something that can be solved you know we're the one that's like we have no fucking idea what's going on inside a neutron star it's basically got three levels and it's got a crust and then it's got it's like the planet earth right it's got a Cross has got a mantle and it's got a core and a neutron star has got what the fuck is going on in the middle there? We have no idea. Right. Right. What the hell happens when you do that? Right. Um, how many of these things are there out there? Right. I mean, no, that that's a so th those are interesting questions. But how what, you know, okay, so now though, because they're 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 discovering a universal, you know, they're trying to find a fundamental truth of universal application that forces continuous progress towards uh a single a single logic of the universe right and a single hierarchical logical universe of, of, by evolution and competition but then you know they're, they're always publishing some some fucking survey or some study but they're not yeah. studies this is fucking game playing it's okay. larping and it's and and the public they're larping as science stuff. what larping as they're science. larping at science it's like uh, you know, why are we why why are we funding you know, I you know I'm not I don't really have a problem with studying the frog you know this particular frog and this particular pond and this particular you know weird geography of Tanzania. I mean, okay, if you want to study that, that's fine. I mean, the the chances that you're going to discover anything useful are there probably zero. But I mean, there's no harm. There's no that's falsehood right. that's going to come out of you studying this frog, right? I mean, I don't you know. Or, you know. You know. Then there's good things like why are we? How do we get rid of it, 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 invasive species in the Great Lakes? I mean, these are you know these are normal. Or what's that fucking rodent that you got me on the rodent kick? And now I'm, <laughs> now I'm thinking about the rodent. There's that rodent thing, and there's the other one that's coming from South America, uh, and they're basically an invasive species. Like, how do we get rid of invasive species? That's an interesting problem. But the minute you're talking about why do people smoke cigarettes for the 9,837,433 time, this is a fucking, you're just, just, just this. Yes. Or, 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 or that, you know, generating outrage over the, over race or something like that. This is some crap. Or publishing papers that are simply false that there's no difference between the sexes, classes, and races. Oh, my. You know, or or claiming that an economic, you know, my favorite one is the that one company that tries to be Marxist in Spain, right? And, and, and oh, yeah, they, I know what you're talking about. And, I know and of course, if you turn look at it, they're not at all. Why? Because the people at the bottom don't want to know. They don't want to. They don't. Not only don't they know enough. There's they can't contribute enough, and they don't give a fucking. They don't fucking care. They just want their paycheck. So, I mean, this all shit, right? You look at, I mean, you try to find some, you know, I've been in, in the consulting, you know, I mean, I've been consulting for my whole life, right? That's all I basically do. And you go into most companies and yeah, the people at the top are not fucking rocket scientists. The people below them probably have more granular knowledge of the individual problems. And the people below that are are, are generally really... You know, they 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 they're not wrong that there's an end. Of, they say, well, we could do this better, right? The the problem is, is that of all the things you could do better, right? The cost of doing any of them 
And it's like, it fix this, it causes that problem. Right. I mean, it's like, okay. right. It's an insufficient scope of understanding. Right. And so, you know, you're, you're in these, these where, so, but in general, companies figure out how to work or they go away. Right. It's not, it's not really complicated. And the reason they go away is usually um, because somebody believes something's false or somebody's trying to persist something that's false. Like, like um, the market for what we do is not going to go. We're so leveraged that I can't reorder, reorganize to a new experiment. Or I'm not skilled enough and knowledgeable enough to know what people want. So I'm going to make a Hail Mary play, which is what what's his name did with Facebook and Meta. What's his name? Mm. Zuckerberg. What an ass clown. All right. <laughs> and so, um, you know, so so you, you'd you realize we're all the same, right? We Nobody knows that much, right? Then, you know, it's just, and the people at the bottom think they know. And it's like, you know, you, you, you might know something, but do you know the totality of it? And do you know that it, how to make that happen? And do you know how many people would quit that are key to us if we tried to make that happen? Right? I mean, there's always a mil million trade-offs. And I, I spend most of my time as CEO, I swear to God, trying to educate my people so that you didn't have those problems. You know, I, why, why I, th I think one of the reasons we were more successful than any uh, other companies is we all sounded the same. Because it basically taught people business in order to do business. And the right. fact that I have to teach people to do business, so they, you know, basically, we had this thing with called report gossip. And so I would, we, Steve would collect all the gossip, and I, well, then we would answer the questions. I'm like, no, it's like, it's always, they always think there's some mysterious contrived meaning behind it. And it's like, nah, here's the problem. You know, I just write the, because I'm a, a communicator, right? but, uh, I just write a thing. I'm like, this is what's actually going on, right? Uh, I have to choose between these things and this consequences and whatever, oh. and, right? And Oh, so show the stuff. work. Right, what? Show the work on why we came to the conclusion. Yeah, and, and when you make a mistake, you said, I made a bet that this would happen and I trusted this would happen. This one case in particular is I trusted a, one of our investors and I shouldn't have, hmm. right? And they're thinking that I had some fucking demonic, Cunning plan on there because often I have demonic cunning. Plan. <laughs> just, um, say. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, it has no, no, no. I just didn't think he'd do that, right? I mean, he wouldn't. Why would he do that? That would have been stupid. But you know, uh, <laughs> you know. stupid happens. Or that, or that they think you got some conspiracy, and it's like, I'm on a, I'm a partner. I don't have a hundred percent of the ownership, right? right? I have a board of directors. Right, I have a bunch of shareholders. I have a board of directors, and one of the significant guys comes up and says, "I want to do that," and I lose the fucking argument. I'm bound to do it, right? Uh, I don't agree with it, but I've I'm the fucking CEO and the board of directors right. and the shareholders that told me I got to do this fucking thing, and I think it's stupid, but you know, I, I lost, right? And so you you guys agree. I should. I was right. I mean, you're. Right. right. I mean, this shouldn't have happened, but I, I don't have a choice. I don't have that outside choice. the scope of free will. Right. And so they, they, that they blame it on you. And like, I'm not like, you're not, nobody who runs a company is all powerful Oz. Right. I mean, you just don't get to lay out these fucking edicts. Right. Right. Um, you know, I mean, it just, well, first of all, people will undermine them that you'll lose your validity by doing it. So I like the gossip thing. Let me answer the gossip questions because most of the time it's like, uh, you're right. I fucked this up. Uh, you're, you guys are right, but it's not my fault or, you know, or circumstances are this, or, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and it's usually something really obvious. Like and they just think that you have some plan and it's not, you know, they, they, they don't want it to be like it actually is. <laughs> well, no, it, it's the obvious thing that occurs to them. Right. I mean, right. well, the, you must have a reason for doing this. Yes. But it's a tangent. It's an effect or effect, a third order effect of the thing that's really serious. Right. So, I mean, I mean, I can choose to have this a thing that annoys you or is pain in the ass for you. Or I can have the thing that that doesn't that I can do not do the thing that creates a crisis for all of us. So, I mean, you know, and I just find that employees just really like. 
being right. informed. I mean, that's right. And, that's and, right. and and they just like it. And it, it's probably more important in consulting because people can leave really, they're highly paid. They're highly sought. So they can leave really easily. So you have a higher want to produce uh, that kind of thing. I always think the the the, the dicks, diss on consultants. Well, I'm not picking on Indians. I'm just using the example because it's the stereotype. But if you buy a bring a bunch of people over from India that aren't part of our culture and they go do some work, they're not going to come to the same logical conclusions you would, and you're going to think that they're incompetent. Well, it's just their frame of reference in India is different from ours, right? So they have the, you don't think those frame of references will accumulate in so many different decisions or differences in work productivity, but they do. Right, because the, so um, so you know you you so you know the, then you go to the government. You say, would you rather have this third tier consultancy or your government worker? Well, you'd rather have the third tier consultancy. Well, the problem is the first tier consultancy will never fucking go and do that government work because the people are too fucking annoying to work with. Huh. I mean, the people would quit rather than work with them. So you have all these kind of things. Well, so consultants get a good rep sometimes and a bad rep. And others, but and there's a difference between hiring labor and expertise. And if you hire labor, you're going to get labor problems. If you hire skill, you get skill problems. If you hire expertise, you're going to have expertise problems. And in some places, what you're actually doing is hiring insurance. And that's the reason you hire IBM or Capgemini or, you know, why? Because they have enough money that your fuck ups in your organization can be accommodated. <laughs> that's really the answer. Sorry, I didn't mean to go off on a rant there. I don't even know what you got me started on. Oh, <laughs> it's the belief that the the it's the belief that people should be in the franchise, right? They have a say in government. No, you should have a your say is your say is staying or leaving, right? That's your say, right? Above that is are you contributing? Well, we only know if you're contributing if you have a family. If, if you're first of all self sufficient, yes, right? that, that means you're not doing harm. That doesn't mean you're contributing. If it's so sufficient, you're not doing harm. If you and have a family, you. what? And thank you for that. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. And if you're not self-sufficient, you're doing harm. Right. But if you've got a family, well, you're at least contributing to intergenerational production as long as they're not equally cr as criminal as you are. Right. I had a, I had an insight that terrified me that day, which is that the, the families whose with fathers who are incarcerated and incarceration is an expected part of life. Oh my. It's too weird for me. I don't know. So then you have a family, right? You're a sustaining family. You have basically what that means is you, 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 you have uh, invested in intergenerational production. Now we have an, uh, now we got, you're contributing the commons by the production of families, right? But do you have say, well, you haven't demonstrated competency yet. Do you own a home? <laughs> Right. And do you right? And do you have do you want to have you invested in a territory? At that point, all of a sudden you're like, well, you know, if you've got a family and you're invested, you're get a family, you're self-sufficient and you own property. Now we probably have to listen to you. But what do we have to listen to you for? You might have something to say. You might have something to say, right? Because you're you're producing capital generations. Uh, if you get up for the you're a small business, you're employing like you know a bunch of people, you know, you now you've got something to say about the system. Right. If you got you're doing you got a bit mid, mid sized business, and I have definitely got something about the system, probably about taxes and probably about um capital formation is kind of how what we invest in. You got an industry, right? Not an industrial capacity. It's a big large organization employs lots of people that makes uh, uh it transforms uh, physical elements of the universe into some from one stage into another. Right. Now you've got international uh, concerns. Right, as well as national concerns. Hmm. Right. So there's a there's an interesting premise. Then it's like some kind of uh, marketplaces for franchises. Multiple yeah, that, that's franchises, that's the idea. Hierarchy of franchises. Thank you for that. And so you, you know you then you get the the the, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm separating the people who do this. I'm assuming that this can be done ethically and morally is you have people who are saying, where do we put money now? Which of these, 
of the uh, research institutes, of the industries, of the mid markets and of the small markets and of the property owning families and of the family formation and as the self sufficient and as the dependent. Where are we going to put the proceeds? All right. And that, that happens both in the private sector where it needs to produce returns and the public sector where it needs to produce common returns. And so this has to happen across the spectrum. Now, when I look at that, I'm like, it's pretty easy that we should have multiple houses, multiple houses of government, and you can move up and down out of those houses. The truth is, once you're in a house for a certain period of time, you have earned the, the capacity to stay there. But... Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a, we definitely need a house of the family or a house of the uh business and industry uh, house of the regions right and we definitely need these things and uh, i'm going to insert my little joke here we need a house, okay. for, house for women because we need something for crazy people my i'm just saying that because so, i'll get a comment on it or some of the tease me for it so said leave your comments below throw a bone to the boys make them laugh right <laughs> Um, uh, but if you can't, uh, if you can't do those things, I don't see why you have a vote. Because a vote is a positive assertion. Uh, you're, you're saying you have competency without demonstrating that competency. And I just don't see that as necessary if you have, because the only thing you really need is defense. And as we can see with how democracies work, you actually don't have any defense in the legislature. Matter Say fact, that again, please. There is no defense from via the legislature. The defense all arises from the courts. Yes. Right. In fact, it's too often the legislature is a, is a is an agreement on what offense to create. So we want to just eliminate that. And if we did that, we would have hopefully some sort of, you know, if you and if you have the best thing of all is you have a a nobility, which is means families who've generated intergenerational prosperity that has intergenerationally contributed to the commons. Now we could do that really well today. And it'd be fascinating to see what, if there was families that persisted for more than three generations and for, for access to that class of people, right. Who would actually have some say, right. They have some veto power basically over stupid stuff, which is what the house of Lords were like. Is that if you could stay in there, how many people would work to get there? Can you imagine what would happen if you create a race for people to see, I need to be a moral family for three generations so we can get ennobled? It doesn't mean you have any particular power. It's just a status thing. And you maybe you have power in the sense of, we're trying to make sure that the fashions of the day don't, which is the purpose of the House of Lords, the fashions of the day, or the, it was the Senate as well, mm -hmm. fashions of the day, don't overwhelm the wisdom of the ages. Right. And then you need a monarchy who's the last judge who says, I don't have to do anything except what Charles does, which is say, architecture needs to be better. <laughs> right? <laughs> the, you know, you can pick your fucking aesthetic thing and work on that for your your monarch, your, uh, right? Work on something important, you know, culturally important excellence for that period of time. <laughs> And uh, you know, go around and and uh, up, give approval to excellences, Christian and uh, mostly Christian and martial, right? I mean, feminine, masculine, but charities and good people, heroes, people do the right thing, and you just go around and take care of making people feel good for contribution to the commons. And then you know that 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 system works well. Now you have to have the administrator. We know how to do that. You create a fucking parliament and you create a you create a, um, a prime minister, and you the monarchy ha approves a cabinet, and you know, and this is all everybody goes along their merry way, and this seems to work pretty well. But I'm sitting here looking at how do we restore the desire to create intergenerational excellences rather than momentary hyperconsumptions, and it just seems like this is not a particularly complex problem because. 
it's really obvious who has what in, what incentives and and what value they would produce by those incentives. And we just need to not assume everybody is Plato's equally wise uh, philosopher. Not every citizen is Plato's philosopher king, which is which is really what we're asking today. Oh my! It's and you know, and it's, you don't have to. You see these guys go around and say interviewing people on the street, asking them. God forbid you should ask a college student a question. My favorite one, I think I, I mentioned already, is the guy who said, which side of the country is the is which ocean on? And they don't know the fucking answer. Oh, my. Right. Well, there, there was one fellow, he was bringing a, a bar of a, a coin, like I think a silver or a gold coin or a candy bar, which would you choose? And they want the candy bar. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> It's just, just stunning. This was playing into. Can I you bring in my topic that's related, or? Absolutely. So Sam. Um, so this is, Sam. Where the fuck is it escaping me? Mm -hmm. Podcast guy, the guy who talks about ethics all the time, uh, debated with debates with. I know who you're thinking of. Why isn't it? I didn't have coffee this morning. I'm gonna blame it on that's the problem. Yeah. So, um, I want to say. Harris, thank you. Harris, Jesus. there you go. Jesus, mental block. It's okay. I had the same thing. I like, I could see his face. So he's out there trying to, you know, again, we should listen to experts and authorities. And I just think this is mm. so funny because I'm always picking on the French and the Jewish for trying to make author authorities, right? I mean, and I show that that's a feminine trait is wanting authorities, right? There's a feminine disposition. There's a lot of people authorities. And because authorities assist you in following a herd, right? And because, of course, people on the left always think they're the authorities. <laughs> no, presume it. That that's the most convenient presumption. And, and I, I, I want to argue with them on this one point: is that is that it's really obvious to me that what we do when we disagree is there's basically two questions. Uh, when people disagree with authorities, it's because we perceive a malincentive, hmm. right? When the explanation isn't sufficient enough, it's asking for trust. Right. It's it's a, a argument by authority. Right. And it produces a moral, and, and it implies a moral violation. And so you are going to, so the, the problem is that the conservatives were right. The people, the, the I didn't put myself in any vaxxer camp, even though I wouldn't ever take the fucking thing. Um, I, I looked at this stuff and I'm like, there's, you're making, you're violating all three rules. You're claiming you're an authority. You don't provide the evidence. Sufficient evidence. And there's, you can't, you can't provide the evidence. Right? It's not what's possible. And uh, you have a, um, uh, and you're violating a moral principle. Which is that you're you're want to do something on my body, right? That you're forcing something something on my body or threatening me with with canceling or losing my job or something. Yes, so those are things that that liars do. Okay, so the so what Sam is doing is Sam is saying you should trust. He's making all these excuses, which is his, which is Mark again, Jew, feminine Jewish Marxist critique. Like you haven't answered the three questions. Why we should believe anybody when there are good three when they're they viol when the, this this thing violated the first three rules of any testif of testimony. Mm -hmm. And so, and so uh, you what they should have done is said we have this is a this we perceive this as a risk. We don't know what how big the risk is and to whom. We have thrown every resource in the country possible to solve this problem medically. 
we've come up with a range of solutions, right? That will do it. Um, but we can't possibly test it by other than doing it. Meanwhile, people are dying. We, given that we have not been, we can't test this. We can't command you to test it. All we can say is to take it. All we can say is, those of you who feel the need to be protected, take it. And those not. Now, what would have happened? More people would have taken it. Doesn't I realize it's a it's turned out to be a harmful drug, right? But <clears throat> that wouldn't have created the left right division. The problem is they wanted the left right division, so they had political motive to 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 do what they were doing. And so this is like okay, now now you've only not got the three. You've expanded it from three causes to four. And at this point, it's like well, we don't have to try. We know we know what. We know what lying sounds like. Right. So if you're lying, if it sounds like you're lying, that's a really accurate measure of whether you're being truthful. So, I mean, that's what happened. It's nothing other than that. Right. And so uh, this whole thing, he's just out there again and he keeps beating this drum. And it's like he gets wronger and wronger and wronger every time, every podcast he makes. And I see this as feminine doubling down. Right? What is it? Ne they never admit they're wrong. Mm. Mm. Whereas if you see that, you know, somebody who's wrong all the time, who I still admire, is Scott Adams. I mean, he's way over his head outside of his don't specialization. Like he specializes in how are people persuading you? Okay. Right. But when he gets what? But he he doesn't he, almost anything of substance. It's just why he's actually not a right winger, right? He's a right winger on truth, but he's not a right winger on anything else. Because he's fucking wrong about everything else. Which is fun. I find I I find satisfyingly humorous for some reason, right? Um, but uh, or Eric Weinstein, who's like he's always telling a half truth there, and I of course I see the other side of it, but it doesn't mean it's not a half truth that he's saying. But you pick on of these guys that are out there, Petersons. He's gone from being half right to a third right. You know I mean? He's they're all over the place. These people. So why should we believe authorities? We we shouldn't. We should say okay. Well, what we should do is get really good at saying what's the how are lies constructed, right? So okay. So here's your criteria for telling if it's a lie, and make the person defend against the lie, not try to justify their truth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, and if, if the public could do that, which is what we do, right? We make a list of checklists of things. Right. <laughs> Test this dimension, this dimension, this dimension, this dimension, this dimension. You know, some of our dimensions are long, like the twenty summon first principles, or the. But I mean, reciprocity. The truth has what? Uh, truth has quite a few, and reciprocity has a five or whatever eight, eight it is. Right. So you know, but we can get down to. Uh, we can disambiguate truth into five or six stages, right? So we make people checklists so they can say, is there a lie going on here, right? I mean, we make checklists for, is this a feminine or masculine argument? And therefore, what's hmm. a, if it's a masculine argument, what responsibility are you trying to get? And if it's a feminine argument, what responsibility are you trying to evade? Right? Hmm. We can make checklists, which is the whole point of what's what law needs. Law needs a checklist that it can uh, disambiguate a problem with. You know, I'm like, I want to say, Sam, I mean, it's a simple checklist. I mean, and you're violating every checklist. So, I mean, rather than claim that you're, we should do all this, tell us what, look at the checklist and say, what should we, what should have they have done differently? And the answer is they shouldn't have lied. How hard was that? You just tell people, you know, we can't prove a vaccine isn't harmful, right? Right. And and secondly, there's God damn it, they're giving away burgers if you take if you take the thing. I'm like, what is the in the hell is this? Like this this is nonsense. Excuse me. Well, I would say that here's the way that we know this is the really insulting part they couldn't say. Dirty people collect this disease. Okay. That's what Mexico said when they had the last pandemic down in Mexico. Turns out that we're not clean enough in Mexico. That's why this disease is spreading. Well, you take that to Japanese levels of 
of obsession, but you know, it worked for them, right? But the truth is, is that uh, dirty people in dirty circumstances collect this disease. But not all of us are dirty people living in dirty circumstances. Although my kitchen might belie that fact right now. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, dirty, dirty people. So, I mean, if you're take you're around old people, uh, the elder care, you're around obese people who can't, and other people who can't self care. You're around um, uh, households that are. Uh, not that are fragile and don't self-care well and you're around other people who don't self-care well you're gonna and so what we saw is that disease spread among dirty people now did you want to have that dirty people in places so again in a hospital a hospital is a place where dirty things come to come to have parties right i mean that's i mean so I got I got seriously ill after my surgery, not because of the surgery, because of some fucking bug I caught in the in the hospital, right? So right. you know, it's just so these are dirty places, even despite the fact that the hospital's trying to be the opposite, right? I mean, but right. I mean, you bring a lot of ant war uh, biological warfare to a particular location, and there's you know there's going to be a war going on ground there, buddy. <laughs> so, so, so I mean, you know, if like if you were so we know who it was, and we know that kids were one of the best vectors. Because why? They touch everything, their faces and you and everything. They're like fucking little disease carrying mo monsters, right? And so, you know, you, we found out that what's happening is that the kids are spreading it around families. Right. And the kids, you know, have the kids, they're gonna get it, and they're just gonna be sick and be fine, but it's not gonna happen when grandma and grandpa get it. Or you know, three hundred pound grandpa gets it, or, or dad gets it. It's fucking over for him, right? And then all this crap about people, you know, this what what is the the name for now? The thing they've got a medical name for what's happening to the body now. The 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 vaccines effect. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. I don't. I'm not. Really okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To do I, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't pull it up. Anyway, I couldn't pull up Sam Harris, so I'm definitely not pulling that up. I mean, I don't know. If I understand. Is. So, um, so it was really crazy, right? I mean, we got this this stuff. It was really easy to say, look, these are the people who are in danger, right? If you're in any contact with any of these people, or if you're in any social situation where there's a lot of people and they're touching each other, glasses and bars and stuff like that, you know, if there's any sneezing going on, I mean. It, oh, yeah. There's a, it's, but for most of us, just go out a little less, right? You know, stay incredibly clean. You know? I had to, I came every time, I mean, I swear to God, every time I came to the door, because my mother's, you know, fuck, walking on the edge of death the whole time, right? I come there, I just meet it first thing, just roll up my sleeves and my elbows, you know, the whole right. thing and do it the proper way they teach you and you, know, you, you right. Do, right? Right. You know, um, <laughs> Um, and uh, then you're fine, right? And but uh, unnecessary kissy face socialization raves, um, dirty right. people. Um, you know, you're it's just you're asking fucking for it. So, why didn't they just say that? Why didn't they just say that? We don't know if this is going to have a negative X, um, so I unless you're at the, risk, maybe you shouldn't. There's there was um, um, political overtone to the whole thing. Yeah, that's right. That's about the fourth problem is they made it political. Now, the problem is once you violated the moral, that's bad enough. Once you violated the political, now it's not a scientific question anymore. Not at all. It's a moral question. Now, now it isn't. Now the morality of it, the immorality of your action brings in uh, altruistic punishment. We're going to, we're going to, we'll pay a cost to punish you, scientists, the administration, the politicians. We'll pay a, a, a we'll pay a, a, the cost of punishing you for your deceits, which is why this stuff isn't going to go away, right? People are it's just people are going to be angry about this for moral outrage. So so all they had to do is tell the truth and not make it a political issue, and it would have been fine, right? But no, they had to they had to, and it was just so weird. I kept watching this. Why do you guys care? Why do, why is this so exciting? 
Why is this hanging from the polarization generated by it? And there's still repercussions in this field is that is they still gain by these by this polarization. I, I, I get that, but I still don't get it. Why would you make? Oh, you're saying by the time it became evident that it could polarize, so they took advantage of the fact that it could polarize. Okay. Yeah, yeah they, they like I think they predicted it was going to polarize, and therefore they went a whole hog. And it is still polarizing and um, generated demand for authority. Which is what they want, right? They want authority. Well, some of them lost. do. The, well, the no, ones, no, because the they feel, people in... feel lost. People feel alienated and lost. The difference is conservatives know how to make themselves feel on, you know, uh, secure, which is by family, friends, relationships, work, and productivity. The liberals are neurotic, and they... I put that piece out again, less Every time... I think I mentioned this already yesterday. The piece out that, you know, the evidence is overwhelming that being a liberal means you're mentally ill. And it's just like in every single dimension. And I just now I was like, okay, well, I mean, we want to, you'd think that two, two, two points of neuroticism wouldn't be that big a deal. Huh. Turns out in large numbers, it really fucking is, right? Because it's not a two, it's not an even two point distribution. It's right. a crazy distribution. So you get the amplification fraction. My. And it turns out, of course, that women are women and, and men without chests are neurotic. <laughs> oh my. I find it really it's easy to explain nice. to people. Look, your brain is a prediction mechanism. Some people what you you experience what it predicts. Right. That's really that's as simple as your brain. You experience what your brain predicts. The female brain, the which was female bias brain or the feminine brain, which you Brad is always trying to get me to say feminine. It's a feminine and masculine, not male and female, but the feminine and masculine brains. Uh, the feminine brain projects emotions, experiences, and the and the uh, masculine brain projects outcomes, ex uh, changes in state. And we call that empathizing versus systematizing. But it's basically what are you predicting? Well, if you keep if what your brain is predicting and amplifying risks of how other people will feel or how you will feel, well, it's you're gonna that's what you're gonna see in the world is made of. And if you got the male brain, and I'm an extreme male brain, you're predicting what processes, procedures, and environments will change, right? Then you'll predict that, and you'll give give that real priority. Well, how do we figure out this, these two differences? Well, we're, first of all, there's the male brain and the and the female brain, and there's most people in the middle, right? I mean, it's just sort of different. Right. It really works out to about, it, it, not surprisingly, it's a third, a third, and a third, right? Um, there's very little problem with having extreme male brain, male brain in politics. It's, it turns out to be very useful. There's a very big problem. And there's not a very big problem of having extreme male brain in in public or in, in interpersonal reactions because you basically get ignored. Oh my, there's not a problem with uh, having an extreme male frame female brain in in relationships, interpersonal relationships, because it's it means it's considerate and caring, right? But. It, you, it, it, and it's and you would think it wouldn't be a problem for it having an extreme male brain in matters of politics because basically you'd get ignored, which is what we do. Except we've created a position where we can't ignore the extreme female brain anymore by giving it equal merit in politics as it does in social order. Whereas the fact is men don't have equal merit in social order because women are more valuable. It's a simple, the world is very simple. But I say, we don't understand how much better we understand the world than that ordinary people right in our group uh because we've now we've now gotten so good at what we do that we're we no longer predict wrong i don't know is that the right way to think of it? we no longer predict incorrectly we no longer under, understand incorrectly that's right we've been smoothed out yes i'm talking too much brad so i don't know that's pretty good that was a good um um looping back That was a good looping back, and it's like, yes, we we're we're to this state where we're um, we're processing information much more efficiently 
and it's becoming noticeable. It will become noticeable because it's not going to change. And it's it's steady state predictability is being generated from our work. And it it's just a sink. They're going to attract more attention over time. Because the people will notice. They'll notice because they're scanning. If they're looking, they're scanning and they're going to detect. And over time, they're going to continuously detect presence of this solution set. Mm -hmm. And it will become inevitable to them. I think. Yeah, I, uh, so we're looping back to the original conversation, which is what the hell is going on? Because it seems like the shift is happening. I don't want to overvalue my own position, like my own world, because, but my ability to write long form, you know, is just, and just talk to people. And I mean, just amazing how much, how much more people like being, having explanations. Mm -hmm. and how much it filters out the morons because the, if you say something it's in a hundred words it's a very short a tweet the, the way to misinterpret that is infinite and the right. way to use it is infinite but the minute you write a long form I mean, first of all they can't there's nothing there's they, they have their their retort has no value that's right um but if you and the second thing is you're more likely to engage the right kind of people you want so I just feel like that. And so it's to me, it's my writing is coming back on. And I feel like I feel like I'm just one small drop of rain in that conversation. But even things like uh there's a confidence that's emerged on the right. It wasn't there. There was excitement on the right in 214 to 216. Mm-hmm. But there's a confidence that it's come up over the past six months. And I don't really understand why. Um, but there's sort of some mass accumulating. And uh, I'm, I'm just hoping it keeps going this direction. I don't know. Anyway, what else you got for your... I'm good. I'm, I think we put in our effort today. We did our, we did our time today. Did our duty and now we're, now we're ready to go on with a productive day. I'm supposed to uh, make sure you're being productive in the creation of your book. Yep. Uh, I want to um, um want to finish with the the homepage stuff with Brandon, and then I'm you and I have already covered a lot of the first principles in law, and I thought that uh, we could give that try to put that into draft form if you'd be willing i'd be happy to do that um because we've got it um, we've basically got all the notes right i want to go through and put that in and say what's missing here okay and because i'm just more convinced that we if we put the the first principles in the nature and a man. And well, if we finish the constitution, it's the short, it's the most condensed, most useful version for people. Right. Okay. And I would like, and I believe we can finish that in a short amount of time. That's an achievable goal that gets the work into people's hands in a way that's actionable. Okay. And every, and when, as I'm working on the, um, Whenever I pick a, a chapter in the book, I did it again the other day. Um, I get, I still get too overwhelmed by the, the amount of time it will take me to to do this. On no, I understand. But the Constitution we've done, that, that just requires a little massaging. Um, and I'm seeing some of it now. Like there's some of the policies need to be stated a little differently and things like that. But I just feel like that's the first problem. I just want to shift our priorities to getting something out the door that's complete and actionable for everybody. And, and then we'll, we can produce the, the, we've, then I, I don't, 
I won't, when I'm working on the book, I won't feel like I have mm -hmm. you know, all this on top of me. Or does that make sense? Yes. Like, it really is. It really is crushing. I, I just don't, I get, I get crushed by it uh, too easily. So I want to have, because I feel that I feel the time coming at us like you do. Yes. You guys do. And I, and I want to, and the truth is everything's there. You don't need anything other than butter. Right. If it's if everything that we need, it can be put in the constitution as either is either preamble, right? Which is the part that's the main, the definitions like man, nature, you know, and we got to clean that up because some of the back of it is still too hostile because I was still angry when I wrote it I would, before I had Brad therapy. <laughs> How kind. Before Brad turned the fire hose of his Chinese water torture <laughs> on the mush of my brain. My. I'm teasing you. That's just love. All right. We did our two hours. Well, thank you very much. Like, Kurt. subscribe, bell, comment. Tell Brad you, you appreciate that all the work he does on behalf of all of us. Well, thank and, you. Uh, well, thank you for joining us again. Bye-bye.